Welcome to Sipping on Excellence. This is Coach KJ, and I'm here with my man, my dude, the Doc. And this is where we will be discussing the exceptional that is absolutely attainable. My friends, here's to living that extraordinary life. Cheers. Let's do this, Johnny. Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, boy, we are acting a fool today. Oh, shit, my mic. Yeah, get it together. Let's go. Fat hour in the game. (laughs) Woo! Woo! They're going to be like, what's wrong with these fools today? (laughs) Welcome to another episode of Sippin' on Excellence. With Coach KJ. And the Doc. Damn, that sounds pretty good, huh? I know, right? (laughs) I feel like. We're going to do that again. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to redo it. We're going to redo it. (laughs) Reduce it. Oh, man. How y'all doing today, man? How are y'all today? Welcome to to another episode. Uh, For those of you who joined us on our live today, it was uh, was a good one. It was a long one today. Yeah. But uh, we had a good time. Oh, yeah. Talked about all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Getting stuff out. Get it off our chest, y'all. Sharing stuff. (laughs) Loving stuff. Hating stuff. Yes. Stuffing. What's going on with you, my friend? What is happening? Um, let's open this up. Let's open this up. What is happening with me? Not a thing, man. Okay. And the way the reason why I say that, because that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> Today to not have a thing. Yes. Yes. You know, all week. You know, I've in in the same mindset of what did I learn about myself this yes. week? Uh I've learned that I know more about business than I thought. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, people always say doctors are not good businessmen. And then I started realizing I've been running a business for the last 20 years. I've been running a couple of them for at least 15 years. And having conversations with business people, I realize, you know, people that are interested in me, I realize we're talking the same language. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound foreign to me. And I was like, oh, y'all done effed up. Y'all done let me learn something. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm just saying, you know, y'all were better off leaving me in the dark. Yeah. Now that these eyes are open, watch out there now. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. It's, you got to be. Yeah. You have to be when you're in control of your own world and people's livelihood depend on you, you gotta you gotta know what they know. Yeah. And a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, so I learned I, I learned that about myself this week and it's something I learn on a regular basis. But when I'm having that sparring match with people that are trying to pull one over on me, mm-hmm. and then they and then you see that aha moment like, oh, he really knows. Right. And then they're like, and I just look at him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So here's how this is really going to go down, <laughs> you know. And they're like, "Are you done?" Oh. <laughs> so you kind of figured this out already. Sure did. Yeah. Here's what I here's what I expect. Here's what I want. Right. So that to me was a good was a good, good. and it happened yesterday. And I was like, "That's a good way to end the week." All right. You, you you ended strong. Ended strong, man. You so strong. Had dinner with some friends last night. I was telling you about that new Spanish spot. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, just. Good week, all in general, man. Good. good week. I can't. I can't complain. Work was good, you know. Yeah, just finally work is. You know, the stuff is all meshing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. now I just got to get people to stop acting stupid. But that's, that's the never whole gonna happen. I know. Right? You can't control what you can't control. True. True that. How about you, man? Um, doing great, man. Doing Your great. lives are good. I mean, I've been y'all. If y'all aren't listening to Coach KJ's lives, they he's dropping gems every day, and y'all get to hear the Kennyisms <laughs> that <laughs> that I used to always get privy to. And yeah. now he's having these conversations with you guys. He goes live every day at noon. Y'all should check it out. It's actually it's actually pretty interesting. You know what's funny about going live is I realize that I'm an in the moment thought process person. I can't I can't do too much pre stuff that's why 
doing videos was always challenging for me because I was so busy, like, okay, making this perfect, perfect. moment. In your head of what it should be. Right. And then, uh, you know, but going live, it's like, oh, shit, I just had this conversation with this person. You know, let me bring this in. Oh, I just had this <laughs> thought. Let me let me bring this in. You know, it's, it's, it's been, actually, it's been fun. and it, I can see it. And, and yeah, because I'm on the spot. Like, okay, I don't, I don't have time to pull over anywhere. Let me <laughs> let me just talk while I'm driving. Because think about it. <laughs> when, do, when do a lot of people do most of their thinking? In the car. In the car. That's why I do it. And they used to always tell me, you turn the music off. You know, you just, oh, yeah. You, I, just, you just roll. I, I do not drive with music in my car. I might listen to some comedians every once in a while, but other than that, I drive silence. I like to hear my thoughts, get them out, and, you know, work through that. And I'm like the opposite. Yeah. I'm always in my head. So when, my, when I'm in my car driving, there's always, I would say 90% of the time is a comedy channel on. Yeah. Because especially in the morning, I just want to laugh. Yeah. You know, get the day pumping. Oh, yeah. Music every now and then, but mostly a comedy station. Yeah. If I'm in the car, because I'm not in the car that long. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, man, his, y'all need to check him out. His lives have been, has been yeah. great. Yeah. But no, I, I, I had a good week. I, back to what I was saying is mm-hmm. the idea that I'm very good at being in that moment. Yeah. I realized also, I won't say realize, I knew. But I'm taking more ownership and understanding and respecting the fact that I'm very intuitive. Okay. Very intuitive. Like, wherever people are at that moment, I'm very quick to, okay, this is how we're going to tweak this today or the conversation we're going to have. Or with a client, you know, I had a couple of clients that we were speaking and it's like, no, I'm not going to talk about this. This is what we're going to talk about. Boom. And we go. And you find that spark and that trigger. I always say I try to get out. Like with training. Yes. I get out what I really want to get out in the first 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> the rest is just BS. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to own up to that spot within the first, especially with coaching, mm-hmm. that 10, 15 minutes, like we getting into it. And then after that, we're able to just kind of like, you know, feel good moments after that. Right. right. You know, so. You gotta That's go. The, you got, but you gotta go through that little rough patch yeah, to, yeah, 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 <laughs> to yeah, pull it yeah. to pull it out of them. Yeah, I you know I I, I do like to give them the uh, the sandwich effect though the 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 Oreo. <laughs> give them a little bit of cookie, stuff it, and then <laughs> give them a little cookie on the back end. <laughs> right. That way you really get it. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. But this was this was an interesting week overall. Just yeah. In the well. The world is an interesting place. And so each week we like to talk about stuff that goes on. Um, One of my biggest what's wrong with y'all's. And this is, I don't know who is to blame, but the person themselves. Let's talk about what everybody's been talking about. Job Morant, you know, and what he did. Do we got to talk about this? I just, I just want to point this out as a stupid what's wrong with y'all. You are a guy who's got your basketball star. You got everything going for you. You're really not about that life. And if you were, you don't need to be about that life anymore. Why, number one, you have a gun? Number two, why you have a gun in a club? Number three, why are you going live on IG? (laughs) I mean, what the hell? And... Because of that, this dude's going to probably end up getting suspended 50 games. Look at the price he's about to pay Right for that. Your team is You're, about to go to the playoffs, and you are not going to be there. You ain't going to see any bit of it. Let alone the start of the next season, possibly. And you're in a state where having a concealed weapon is not legal, and you're about to get brought up on charges as well. well dude, what are you, what are you thinking? Also, what are you doing with that small ass gun? He right? was on like yeah. his neck chain. Yeah, he's only six feet tall, dude. I just, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand it. Like you can't make that make sense to me. No, ever. There's nothing you can tell me as to why that would make sense. That it. it also, and you know, we, you know, we try to, we always try to trace things back. Like, okay, well, how did he grow up? How, he grew up in a good home. His dad was a ball player. His dad was a coach. His dad trained him to get him ready for the league. It's, again, 
because <laughs> he got called out by somebody. Is that Sh- Shannon Sharp called him out? <laughs> I didn't even hear what Shannon Sharp said. So it, it, whatever it was, it was amazing. Basically, it was like you ain't about that life. Yeah, and he decided he needed to show that he's about that life and. Now he's on an, and this is what got me on that whole concept, the apology tour. Now he's on the apology tour. Like I let my team down. I shouldn't have done this. You can't apologize to me for being stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Yeah. I we feel talked about you're that young. Live, about the apology tour. You yeah. know, you're young and somebody's, I would say somebody needs to teach you, but that right there, you don't need to be taught that. That's just nah, stupid. Nah, nah. You're not about that life. No. Bro. That's just that you life. ain't. That's just yeah. stupid. And somebody who's about that life gonna show yeah. you one day. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's what you don't want. Right. You're just like a rapper. You yeah. just a reflection. Yes. You are not it. <laughs> right. It's like Get come on. Come man, on, man. Miss me with that shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, man, come on. Another what's wrong with y'all. Oh, this is boy. gonna be and I just happened to catch this post on somebody's social media. It's growing now more than ever. You know, the trans community is not just transgender. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. What is happening, and I get that aspect, you know, but what is happening with this whole new transracial movement? Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They interviewed a couple people, and this one young black woman was like, I don't identify with, my, with these people. They're thugs. I cross the street when I see them. I identify as white, and she's darker than me. Good luck with that. You know? And then you have this white guy who, because he spent the last five years in Korea, is now saying, and has been having surgeries to try to fix his face, he says, now I feel like I'm Korean. And I tra- and I uh, identify as being Korean. I'm just curious, man. And this is, I'm not phobic of any kind, and I shouldn't have to say that. But is there going to be an end to, no. to, and this is kind of what we talked about, this whole woke mentality, blah, 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 mm-hmm. whatever. Is there, is there going to be an end to what people identify as? Didn't we talk about a couple of weeks ago somebody wanted to identify as a cat? Yeah, yeah. And how now, if you, I, I can't forget what study was that people are saying there's 70 or so different gender identities. Do they have a flag for each one of them too? I just, I just, it's, it's one of these things where at some point, are we going to just, are Why don't we you can, look that up? Are we going to identify again as human? <laughs> yeah, man. You know, as just, all part of the same human race. Now, I, I get how you feel about different things, but to say, I was born this way, I'm black, but I identify as white. Well, I promise you, you walk out in society and see what that identity what? gets you. <laughs> you know the first thing I think I about. I identify as white, so I want white privilege. You know the first thing I think about, though, and you know, we're, we're, we're about that comedian life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Clayton Bixby. You don't remember Clayton Bixby? No. It was uh, Dave Chappelle's character. The white, black. Yes. Black, <laughs> okay. the, the black, white. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wasn't registering Clayton. <laughs> Clayton Bixby. You know, I remember character names. Yes. <laughs> this, 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 this is, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> Dude, it's just people, this whole, I, I, I just, I'm, I'm losing my yeah, focus because I don't know. I'm waiting for Tom Hanks son to say something. It's Willie though, he's probably had to get put down like a dog. <laughs> I mean, it's just there's just so much going on that. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and I was like, "What's going to end up happening with the way the world is being viewed from a political standpoint to how we view each other?" to how our kids are being raised, to how our elders are being treated, to the Me Too movement, to the swinging of the pendulum, to the male-female relations. All of that is getting so extreme that at some point in time, I don't know when it's going to happen, there's going to be a massive reset. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that reset's going to be, but everything's going to come to a head 
like the world always does at some point in time, when it gets to be too much, the world resets. Yeah. Period. When your computer has too much shit going on, eventually your computer crashes and you got to hit the reset button. But think about this, you know, how hard and fast everything's coming, but that male dominant, you know, pendulum Mm -hmm. was all the way over here. For a very long time. And technically, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> you know? Because you, you go corporate. It is it is at the top. But people don't... The thing is... You guys have a good time out there, okay? <laughs> we'll, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> what's, what's funny is you hear all the time, not just male, female, but race, everything else. People keep saying, I want equality. Right? Okay. And they're working towards equality. And they think working towards equality is swinging the pendulum way to the other side. What people don't realize, and I want y'all to think about this. Do you want equality or do you want balance? Mm. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, for example, in the women's movement, I want equality. But you don't want to go climb a telephone pole. You don't want to go take out, pick up trash. You don't want to. So that's not equality. You want balance. You want recognition for what you do and equal for what you do, but you don't want to do everything. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. You know? And was it, so going back to the Me Too movement, wasn't it initially, it was started by, I can't remember her name. God bless me for that. Um, but, but it was about sexual harassment in the workplace, sexual harassment in the workplace by marginalized women. Mm-hmm. And it was pulled away and put into the marginalized women in Hollywood. Correct. Really? The Harvey Weinstein. It was yeah, that whole, yeah, that thing. whole. Yeah. So and it I feel like it kind of took away from the shine of what it was doing for the marginalized women. Correct. To feed this this upper echelon marginalized group of women technically speaking and i feel like it it is sad because i feel like it lost its way and i think it's lost its yeah it's lost its luster like what it's like what it was meant to be because it became easy kind of like me look too. at me too look at so. where the black lives matter movement started mhm and then look at what it became and it it became a t-shirt it, it became a tagline mm-hmm. as a, a bumper instead of sticker. it becoming a movement, it became a tagline. It yeah. became a hashtag, yeah. you know, and that's just not what it was meant to be. No, you know, that's not what I feel the me too movement was meant to be. It was meant to open eyes and make change. And then it just, it and, went. And you know, it's funny about the whole black lives matter is you brought that up mm-hmm. is it was a movement that all of a sudden became an organization that allowed for people outside of black that all of a sudden say, oh, that's that organization. They're anti-Semitic. Oh, they're racist. They're this. It's not an organization. Almost it's, wanting to make it a terrorist organization. Yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. Like how they tried to do with the Black Panthers back in the day. Yeah. But the movement was nothing compared to that. Yeah. You know, it's not a militant movement. Yeah. <laughs> but- it became, it changed. And then you got the heads of the, you know, the news reports of the, the the women who started Black Lives Matter taking those funds and buying homes for their families, mm-hmm. you know, and saying, yes, those funds were to uplift black people like my family. Really? <laughs> now you're taking something and making it look different, you know. That's why people question when we do things. What's the ulterior motive? Right. Right. You know. But then what was that? <laughs> Whatever you do, don't fight in front of white people. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? That was the Don't don't do anything out of turn. Man, y'all need to watch Chris Rock's special. special. It was amazing. That thing was absolutely amazing. It was educational. And if you watch it and you get triggered, you need to ask your <sighs> Why are you triggered? Why are you triggered? You know what? That, that you way. know what? When you're triggered, why are you triggered? Right. Everybody needs to be asked that. No one's ever asked that. You ever think about that? Even when on television or nobody said, well, why, why are you triggered by that? 
that makes me anxious or I'm triggered by it. It makes me upset. Well, why? <laughs> makes me anxious. You mean I have anxiety. I don't sleep at night because of that. Podcast topic. Why are you triggered? Yeah. Got my phone out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, so it, it is. It's a good question. Why do certain things trigger people? Why are you triggered? You know, and that's what we need to ask ourselves. When all these things are happening around us, why are we triggered? Right. You know, um, but that's not our podcast topic of the day. Nope. You know, we're going to we're gonna talk about some things that, number one, a listener last week told us he wanted to, he wanted Coach to really, Coach was talking about, Outcome. like, his outcomes and processes, and he was like, yeah. well, I want you guys to talk about process you know what is that process and we're like huh why don't we just talk about the life process yeah so before we get into that let's go to the drink of the day the sip of the day um today we have tell them go bama road tide <laughs> the drink is called an alabama y'all <laughs> <laughs> what's in it so you got one ounce of cognac or brandy an ounce of cointreau you have a half ounce of lemon juice and a tea, uh, half teaspoon of sugar. Shaking it up, shaking it up, shake it up, shake it. Pour it in a martini glass and sip to your heart's content, y'all. It's like chilled and warm at the same time. It's, it's fire. Oh, yeah. All right, you Cheers. guys. Cheers. Oh, man. That's a, that's a good cocktail right there. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. enjoy this one. Yeah. Because that's that's a good that's a good it's a good good way to start this one. Mm -hmm. I'm about to whew, whew, warm it up. Warm it up. A little chilly outside. It's raining. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So so let's get into this, man. Um, we all know that life has multiple different processes, right. and so what I want to get into is your head on what is your process. For if not only for when you coach other people to to where you're trying to get them, but how do you approach your life? And if you're talking about I'm trying to better myself, what's the process and how does that start? Whew. I think the process starts with you identifying where you are. OK, I think you have to start with where you are. What is. Well, one, what is really going on and being honest with yourself, I think people are not being honest with themselves with talking about their life currently um, because they want something more, but they're not identifying what's going on. So they well, That's why most people say you don't know where you're going until you, until you know, know where you you've come at. from yeah. and where you are. Yeah. So what has gotten you to where you are? You have to look at what's happened in your life. Right. You know, so I think a step in the process is rehash your past, figure out where your mindset is. Mm -hmm. And then like coach said, figure out where you are and how do you get people to focus on where are you? What are there certain questions that you pull out of people? Like, okay, de define to me today, what is your life like? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if that I is said, one of them. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's what is going on with you today? Like what's your day look like? What does, what, how when are you, you wake up? What happens? Yeah. When you wake up, what happens? What, what are you eating? When you, when you're having conversations with your partner, are you having a conversation or are you listening or are you doing all the talking? Um, are you, um, what are you triggered by? Like, what affects you? What, what, what troubles you? What, why, where are you, or, and then I kind of get into this next phase of it. Where do you think you need to be going? Or where are you coming, or where are you running from? So, because a lot of times people don't understand the difference. Like, sometimes we're thinking we're running to something. Sometimes we, we're running actually away from running something. away from something. I always ask people, you want to know steps to success. Because people always ask me, how did you get to where you are? 
that's not what you should be learning. Yeah. You should be learning, how am I going to get to where I want to be? And so the first step is, where are you right now? Well, I'm this type of person, wh- whoever that is. And then you ask, what's your end goal? Where do you want to be? Yeah, your outcome. Yeah. And, and what are you, what are you looking of, for? Because when we were talking on the uh, live last week, get it out, get it out. Get it out. <laughs> That's the new season come. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Just don't get anything in your mouth like I did <laughs> right. with my coffee this morning. Um, understanding your outcome. Like understanding the outcome goal that you really, really think that you want because it can change immediately. Oh, but, absolutely. But creating a process is 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 creating the have the habits, habits of the things that you do going to them but we can't create that until you know the outcome that you want and i think uh you know one of the and i you know you know me i'm a big reader so yes i think uh you know a lot of people have used this book but uh atomic habits okay um it kind of goes into the whole idea of uh, you know process goals versus outcome goals and things like that but um, I've seen other people being able to take that platform and being able to manipulate it to build their own business in a way where they're even talking about using outcome goals and process goals, even though this guy already wrote it. So everybody's building something. But I think it's the identity and understanding where you want to go versus, you know, I just want a whole lot of money. Well, you if, you, if you ask people... If you ask people what life's process is, mm-hmm. I guarantee you what they will what they will point out is okay. You're born, you go to school, you right. get a job, you have kids, right. you have a family, you retire, you die, and, and why do most they people, have that? And most people will say that's life's process. Well, okay, that may be how most people live their life. Mm-hmm. Now, let's take life's process in segments you're born and you go to school well if you're in that phase because some a lot of our listeners are young if you're in that phase of where do i go to school or do i need to go to school that's a process in itself that has multiple smaller processes within to get to the end game of choosing the school you're going to go to okay for example the process of coach saying i'm going to morehouse Right. That's that was the end game at that stage. So where, So what's where? the process of for me to get through to go to Morehouse? Yeah. And that was the work you put in to do that. And it's a, the process is all a mindset. Yeah, it's a mindset, but it's and it's also it sets you up the outcome goal, the that it sets you up for the process of being able to work in reverse so you have a better understanding how to get forward. Yes. Because you can see it better. If you don't have the goal, yeah. then there's no process. There's because no process. how do you start a process with no end? You're grinding. You're not you hustling. Gotta, you're not hustling. Yes. And so for me, it was, okay, I'm going to go to college. Mm-hmm. And the goal was, I knew I was going to go to college, but the goal was, how do I get college paid for? Okay. I don't have the money. My mom doesn't have the money. We got to figure this out. Start working backwards. So, okay, now I know nobody's paying for me to go to school, so I got to find somebody to pay for me to go to school. How am I going to do that? Oh, I got to get good grades. Oh, maybe I got to play sports. Whatever it may be, mm-hmm. I got to figure that out. So you now are at ninth grade figuring out, okay, now I got to start this process. And Turn that, and burn, baby. And that life process is, okay, <laughs> I got to work to make money. Mm-hmm. I got to... I got to go to school and make good grades so somebody will want to pay me. And I got to do well in sports just in case. So did it all. But that was my process because that was going to get me to the next step, which is the first goal, which to me, I couldn't look past that because right. I could only see up to that. You, my vision is short yeah. at that time. And that's fine. It's okay to have short vision till you reach that goal. Then you look it's ahead like- to the next goal it's like a ca- it's like a uh it's like a camera the aperture just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and smaller, and smaller so that way you're zoned in on it and you're 
you're not going to deviate from that path. It doesn't matter what happens. You're not going to deviate from that path because that's the path that you have to get there. And what most people see, most people look out into the world and they see this vast, vast giant forest of just chaos. And they're like, God, my goal is way over there. I don't even know how to, how I'm going to get there or how I'm going to get through it. And there was that famous uh, quote that basically says, you know, this guy's going through the forest and he's like, I can't see, I can't see the end. I can't see where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And he's like, can you see your next step in front of you? And they're like, he's like, well, yeah, I can see that. Well then take that step and then look for the next step in front of you and take that step. Don't worry that you can't see the end of the forest. Take the next step, you know, and that's, that's what people need to realize life's process is, is just don't look at, it's crazy when I hear people who are in high school talking about when I retire <laughs> or when I talk to college students when I retire and I'm like, you missed a lot of living. I'm like, I hear about, you know, don't live your life with the hopes of retirement, live your life with the hopes of living your life, right? you know? And then you will never think about retirement. There you go. Finally. Good Lord. Get it out. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know this is live. There's no editing here. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I, 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 I 100% agree with you. People's, you know, people, you're right. Yeah, people, people are living, they're living like they're, but the thing is, when they're living to a goal of retirement, using your example, that's not a goal. That's a, that's a process of finishing your goal. That's on the other side of the goal. But people you, you, feel you, that's the goal. Yeah. They're, go, they're like, their goal is to, I can finally breathe at 65. And the only reason why 65 is an age is because the government says that's when you can get Social Security. Yeah. What if retirement means I've reached the goals that I've set and I want to retire at 35? And what's a retirement... Didn't we talk about this before? Wasn't retirement created by the Chinese? I don't because remember. people were living, they were working way too long and they created a level where they said, okay, you have to stop by this age so a new crew of people can start coming it in. Wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. But it's just, you know, people set lofty goals and then they can't take their eye off of it and they can't see the steps to get there because they're focusing too far ahead. And the thing is, excuse me, and the thing is, that's the life process. Take that one step and say, okay, you know what? I know that we want to, I want to go to med school eventually. Okay, well, then in college, I got to take these courses. I'm not thinking at that moment, I want to be the spine surgeon. I don't, I can see it. Yeah. You know, then when you get to the next step, the world becomes a little more clear. And then the step after that, the world becomes even more clear. And you can see, but people get so caught up, I can't see the end goal, so I'm lost in, I'm lost in even trying to develop a process. Yeah. It's, it's, it's writing an outline. That's all it is. It's creating an outline. You think about the outline. You yeah. have the title of, the, of, of, of everything, which yes. is the outcome. Then you have Roman numeral one. What is that? You want to go to medical school. Okay, we got to create our A. In A, one, two, three, four, right. whatever. Whatever they are. The, right. Yeah, however many it takes. But I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a loss of way because, one, I think people are creating their outcome based off of somebody else's outcome. It's not their own. They're not creating their own, their own worth their own ideas, their own critical thinking, their own their own human experience. They're creating something based off of what they saw on television. Right. What they see other people are doing. Um, you know, it's 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 not their own. They don't have their own vision. Or they have this thing of, I just want to be wealthy. Okay. So that's not crystal. So, so right. So wealth is your goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you have your goal of I want to be wealthy. So what's your plan? What do you want to be? How do you want to obtain that wealth? Oh, well, whatever I can do. Well, that's not a plan. And that, those people will always be broke. Let alone, what does wealthy look like to you? Right. What is, what is wealthy? For me, it might be I just want a great family. You know what I mean? Like, right. You and you have people that will say, yeah. if you have a dollar 
$10,000 is wealthy. Mm-hmm. If you have $10,000, $10,000 ain't wealthy. Yeah. Wealthy, I was having this conversation last night. When I made, the first time I made 100 grand, I was like, holy shit. But <laughs> here's the thing. I, didn't, I never saw 100 grand until I was well in my 30s. Why? Right. Because I was in school, working, taking care of business, whatever, the whole time. And so each year of my life, the money I made was the most money I had ever seen in my life. So when I made 30 grand, if somebody told me the next year you're going to make 32, I don't know what it's like to make 32. So to me, I was like, I'm winning. When I made 50 and somebody says next year you're going to make 60, I was like, I'm rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I don't know any different. Yeah. Now with social media, you see what other people make yeah. or better yet, you see the perception of what people want you to think they make. <laughs> That's the tr- honest you know what I mean? right there. Yeah. And then you say, oh, I want that. But nobody tells you the process of how to get that. Nobody tells you the work or the hustle to get that. But and the people who are posting it don't know how to get that. Because they're selling it to you. Yes. You're making them money so they can sell you the idea. And then you run away with that. That's why it's so funny because as a coach, you know, I follow certain coaches, whatever. It's interesting because nobody's, t- everybody's talking about how to build a coaching business. But nobody's coaching. Everybody, the people I follow are only coaches. Yeah. Like, that's what they do. They're not selling a coaching business or selling a practice or what you should should not do. Right. Mm-mm, I'm not buying into that. Haven't you noticed, too, in your business, a lot of online trainers aren't training anybody? No, but they're telling you how to train, and they're selling the training to trainers to buy. It's Barbizon. Yes. It's Barbizon. Exactly what that is. People will be like, what's Barbizon? <laughs> it's Barbizon. Barbizon right? were models that didn't make it. Teaching selling, other models. You know, teaching other models. This is how the industry works. And this is how we're going to set you up. In other words, they're creating more teachers. Yeah. And you know, and you have you have all these people who are That's delicious. <laughs> you have you have you have all these people who are supposedly these experts but they're not using their expertise to teach anybody anything Mm -hmm. you know they're not they don't have clients and it's the funniest thing you know and i laugh about it because i see it in the healthcare industry you have all these doctors that are experts but yet when you really peel back the layers they're not good at what they do yeah and it's like man people listen to you be careful about what you say, mm-hmm. you know, because there are people who take everything to heart. You know, that's a little off topic, but I think when we look at life's process, life's process should be, for me, should be simple. It is number one, which we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Figure out your passion and your purpose. Yes. That's first and foremost, figure out where you are. Where are you right now? And then ask yourself some questions. Number one, am I happy? Mm. Number two. Say that. And this is all about the right now. This is part of your process. Number two, am I content? Number three, what do I want? Number four, what don't I want? Number five, what are my deal breakers? That's all about right now. Mm -hmm. Because those things can change. And then step two. What is my purpose? Do I know? Well, now in the process of you life. Know, yeah, you have a better idea right. of your purpose. Right. Now in the process of life, the first purpose is where are you? The second, I mean, the, the first step in the process is where are you? The second step is now I got to figure out what is my purpose. Mm-hmm. You don't know? Now it's time to start thinking about that because if you don't know your purpose, steps three, four, and five will not matter. Yeah. You'll never get there. Yeah. And your purpose maybe something that you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so what are you passionate about? If you don't know your purpose, then think about, all right, and this is what I always tell people, figure out what you love doing and then find a way to make money doing it. Right. You know, so what's your passion? If you're like, oh, I like reading books. Well, shit, okay. 
I don't know how to tell you to make money doing that. <laughs> but I mean, I then can. you might then you might if you're gonna if you like reading books, cool. So why don't you get a job to start dictating audible books? Or I got one even better. Why don't you go on YouTube and review books? Yeah. That's a that's a job in that's, itself. And you create a you book create a club. business around what you love. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, just like that. You got a business already. Just whoever reading. you are. Wherever you are, just reading. <laughs> That's a business. You know? And then, you know, once you figure out what you're passionate about, do you make that your purpose? Or your purpose can be something very vague as in, you know what? I want to educate. My purpose is to educate. Okay. So how can you educate? Well, I'm passionate about reading or I'm passionate about music. I'm passionate about this. Cool. So if you're passionate about music and you want to educate, be a music teacher. Yeah. You know, or if you're passionate about reading and you want to educate, like Kenny said, get a YouTube. Yeah. You know, so that's what I mean by step two, figuring out what your purpose and your passion are. Which is interesting because when you just said that, it made me think about this. When you start talking about what you're passionate about and the things that you dislike, like whatever, all those things, it gives you a level of clarity which leads you into your purpose that you create so that your way you can move forward. But what you're saying is you're actually not only becoming, developing your purpose, you're repurposing your passion and giving it more clarity as well. Correct. So you're, con- you're, you're condensing it down. So your aperture is starting to close, 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 close. And because once you get there, it's. Yes. And so once you figure out where you are, mm-hmm. once you figure out kind of what your passion is, because your purpose is going to take a little while to get to what it. your yes, what not your what passion somebody is. else's is or what you see yeah. other people doing is what you feel passionate because it may it may it may take a little while to figure out your purpose. A lot yeah. of people go through their whole life and don't figure that out, but figure out what you're passionate about. I think the third step and also probably involved in steps one and two as well. Surround yourself with people who will push you towards your purpose and will give you the space to live within your passion. Mm -hmm. So your ability to succeed is directly proportionate to the company you keep. Mm -hmm. 100%, whether it's your friends, whether it's your family, whether it is your partner, whatever that may be, those groups of people can destroy you or build you up. You just have to choose who's in your circle. And that's probably the that's probably the most important decision you will ever make in your life mm-hmm. is the people you put in your inner circle. And that will change as time goes on as you start growing and maturing. There are people who were necessary for now but weren't necessary for the next step like like Tyler Perry said people in your life are like booster rockets mm-hmm. they're used to push you but the booster rockets don't take you the whole way they fall off and you keep going right. but they were necessary to get you to a certain level right so there's people in your life that are those boosters use them as such they use you as such you know but make sure you understand that toxic people will keep you toxic you know another overused word People who, (laughs) you know, people who will will hold you back because they don't want to see you succeed because they don't know their purpose and they don't want you to find yours. So those people aren't good for you. Misery loves company. Right. Misery loves company. And if your whole life is spent kind of giving of yours and not receiving anything, then you're not going to progress. So make sure you have in your life's process, knowing where you are, Trying to find your passion and purpose, your inner circle is probably a, yeah. A, being I always say being the middle of the five. If you're if if there's five of you, you want to be that middle one. And once that becomes where you're the number one, then it's time to go ahead. Not say you have to discard them, but you want to kind of like okay, we need to reevaluate this. I need to move forward. Everybody I know that's super successful. They all do the same. You don't want to be riding someone's coattails, right. but you don't always want to be the person wearing the coat either. Right. 
you know, you want to. There's an overall development. And yes. We're not saying get rid of your friends. We're just saying in your personal development, as you grow, you want to attach yourself to people that are going to be of benefit. And you are actually of benefit to them. Of value. And of it's value. not necessarily, oh, they're pushing me forward in my career. Right. Are they helping you with your personality development? Are they helping you with your educational development? Do they provide you any source of security, friendship, loyalty, all of these things which are necessary to grow as a human being, if they're not giving you any of that and you're it's one-sided, they're withdrawing from the bank. They're never making a deposit. You're the bank. If everybody's always withdrawing money from the bank, withdrawing your value and your currency, yeah. your social currency, and they're never depositing any back, those people are never... You're, your bank will oh, go bankrupt. Depl- You'll go into yeah. bankruptcy. Yeah. yeah. You'll be absolutely depleted and never be able to replenish that. You know, and so you need to have people around you that will give you something and not always take. Um, another step towards the process in life, which, which leads to success, and it becomes important to define what you think success is. What does success mean in your life? Is success, like you said, is it just being able to take care of my family, having a family, having a relationship that works, right. having a job that I love, all of those things, that's, your, that's what your, your end point is success. And so the processes are, we've talked about how do you get to a job that you love, find your purpose, then find a way to make money. How do you get to the point of family and success? Find that partner that's going to give you as much as you give them. Right. You know, and know that it's never going to be equal, but it will always go back and forth, you know, and then it should never be. equal. No, you don't want it to be. No, you know. And so as things go forward, these are all the steps that you have to. It's a lot. You got to, But you got to be ready for that for that battle. But you, that's, but you know what? Also, with your outcome and and what you really, 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 truly own up to what you want to obtain. Um, I think the biggest thing is the process is also about taking action and the action steps that you take builds confidence to be able to earn that outcome. Yes. To be able to receive, not only earn, but to receive it because you can earn it because you did all the work and you build the habits because you took all the action steps. But when you get it, you're actually able to receive it and yes. not to like disrespect and like discard it. Like, oh, yeah, you know, I made it. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that thing and right. move on. You're actually able to sit in and be like this. I did this. But I think one thing, too, that people are forgetting when it comes to obtaining success mm-hmm. is you don't do it alone. Mm-hmm. Nobody becomes nobody's self-made. We've talked about this, you know. We talked about this on one of my lives. Yes. When you jumped on. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody is Mm self-made. Everybody has helped getting to where they are. And so for you to be successful, you have to be willing, and it should be part of your inner being to do the same for somebody else. Because there's nothing that makes you look better than the person you helped looking great. It pushes... If you guys can't see my hands, if if I'm at a foot and they're at six inches, if I bring them to a foot, that moves me to a foot and six inches. Right. It just helps me look better the better they look. Right. If I raise you up, everyone's going to be like, damn, he did that for that person. Hey, listen, it always looks good, no matter what happens. Because right. guess what? If they decided, you know what? I'm on my own now. You're like, but I okay, help. Cool, cool. But you know what? He did that for him. Exactly. He's not even with me. What's wrong with him? You know what I mean? Versus what's wrong with you because you're the one that extended that hand. You're the one that helped. And because we don't live in this world alone. I love how we're so animated. Yeah. And nobody can see (laughs) it. Nobody can see see it. I mean, YouTube. YouTube Y'all have to y'all gonna have to (laughs) y'all have to subscribe to YouTube to see this. But people don't realize that your level of success goes so much higher. And I'll tell you this. My success in medicine business went up 
tenfold when I started my foundation. Mm. And the reason why is because when you do good for other people, it comes back to you in a way where people look at you as like, okay, he's not out for self, so I'm going to help him so he can help other people. And I always tell people, the more I make, I want to make more so I can do more. <laughs> and if you have that mentality, dude, you're going you're gonna to do phenomenal things. You want to hear a funny story? Yeah. You'll love this one. But just like what you said, when I got married the first time and I was personal training, yeah, business shot through the roof Mm -hmm. because you now look like a man that's responsible. Yes. You're respectful. You, you, you have a wife to go home to. You have, you have responsibilities. I I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This is, this, this is what we're doing. Oh, okay, cool. (laughs) Yeah. And on that same note, everybody knows. And even me being a single dude, I know that my potential, I shouldn't say my potential, I know that my ability to succeed further Mm -hmm. is capped because I'm single. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Every successful person has somebody in their corner taking that ride with them. Like, Mm -hmm. if you look at the ultra successful, and I didn't say the ultra rich, I said the ultra successful and I want people to understand that, that you don't travel this planet life alone. If you do that ability for you to be all that you can be is stifled because you don't have that extra push. And so one of life's processes I think should be what we talked about, the people in your life, Mm -hmm. your partner is probably one of the most critical decisions you will ever make and that partner doesn't have to have the same purposes and passion as you they probably won't but they have to respect it understand it and want to see you reach that it's funny because we were just talking talking about about that that, yeah yeah, when we're talking about the book yeah and he was talking about the fact that you want a partner that or you will your partner will realize that they're not number one. And it's not that you need to make more money. It's your ability to be in your purpose and your passion. And part of that scope is I get the fullness of your love while you're in your process of building or doing the things that are you're living out, your own purpose. Like your partner just is a part of that journey with you as opposed to being Number one. Right. And what people also need to realize, which is an important part of life's process, is failure. Yeah. You know? Failure. Best teacher. Exactly. Failure is, you're, and not failure as a human being, you're going to not get everything right. But when you fail at something, that is part of the process of growing. Right. You know, and so life's process involves failure. And I think one of the things that we talked about in our life with raising kids today, we're not giving them true life experience. We're not giving them the opportunity to fail. We're saying everybody gets a trophy. Everybody wins, which isn't real life. Yeah. You will fucking lose sometimes. (laughs) You are. I'm sorry, man. You are going to take an L. You know what? What did it say about like? NBA players or football players, mainly NBA players. Yes. Coming in second place, there's no such thing. You either win the championship or you don't. Or you lose it. It's that simple. And the ones that lose say, I don't like this feeling. It is way too close to the mountaintop. I need to improve. Where did I go wrong during the season? Where am I missing? What are the skills? So I start taking process step number one. Yeah. To, I reevaluate my process. Nobody, I mean, my, my outcome. Nope. Think about it. Nobody goes to the Olympics thinking, "God, I really hope I get silver." <laughs> you know, nobody does that. Yeah, you don't go into any competitive sport, which is basically all of life. Yes, and think to yourself, "Man, I really hope I come in second. Yay! No, no. you you don't. Not at all. You know, 
And there's no aspect of your life where you hope you fall short. <laughs> I'm sorry. And so because of that, we need to start teaching kids at an early age that life, number one, is not fair. And part of the process of life is that you're going to fall, you're going to bloody your knees, you're going to bump your head, you're going to not win, you're going to take a few L's and understand that it's okay because that's a process. You won't take that same L twice Yeah. because you're going to learn from it and then you're like, all right, it's going to help me focus on what I want to do in my life. You know, it's funny. I, I, when people say things are not fair, I actually think it is fair. I think that it is fair in the sense that you have an opportunity to do one or the other. That's all you're afforded. It's just choices. that opportunity. Your, your, your choices to do one or the other, whether you win or lose or make money or you lost a business, it's still fair. You had choices. Yeah, like how people say, I want fairness and equality. So... Fairness and equality to me is I gave you a job interview. I gave you a job interview. I let you apply for the same job. I let you apply for the same job. You now have the opportunity to impress me. Mm -hmm. That's equality. Equality doesn't mean outcome. Equality means right. opportunity. Like you said, if I've given you the opportunity, right. And you are just not qualified, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you know, or if I give you choice A and choice B and you choose choice B and I was hoping you chose choice A, sorry, you chose wrong. We all have choices in life. I don't care what anybody says. Red pill, or blue pill. There's always a choice, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's red pill, or blue pill. You and know? there's always a choice and we don't always make the right choices. And that happens. And that's okay. That's part of life's process. And if all those fails, you learn from that dealing, right. from, from that choice, and you say, I don't like that choice. I will not make that choice again. Like, I hate when people say, I don't date this type of woman, or I don't date this Oof. type of dude. No, you just don't date. You just you had a bad experience with that dude, or you had a bad experience with that woman. Just don't date her again. Or don't date him again. You know the type. You see it well, a mile away. Well, it's not away. even a type. Okay. You know, because there's that. You could get two people who have very same looks, very same personalities, but they're not identical. You may respond. So that's why I say, oh, I'm not going to date ex this, this type of woman because all the ones I dated in the past were shit. Well, that, well, no. You know what I mean? Well, no, that's not the case. That particular woman you didn't get along with, and there may not have been anything wrong with her. Y'all just didn't mesh. So why am I going to categorize all women who are similar to her and just say, I'm just going to cut out that whole aspect of women or that whole aspect of men because you didn't mesh? That told, to me is dumb. Yeah. I was told a long time ago, let each person write their own chapter. Yes. Let each and every person write their own chapter. You know, we can't. You can't grow if you're categorizing and, and labeling and white labeling. And it's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, putting up Christmas ornaments in, 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 in the boxes and overhead. It's like, okay, this is this bin, this is this bin, this is this bin. Oh, just put all that in that bin. Uh, right. Dump this in there. Yeah, part of, you know, part of life's process is being able to take it on the chin and move forward. You know, that's, that's a, I think that's a huge part of this process. <laughs> it made me think about the, what, what did I say last week? I said, we always talk about gut punch, you know, being tough, you know, but, you know, having the guts, is, that grit to keep standing. But can you take it on the chin? Right. The chin's probably going to get punched faster and harder than that gut. Yes. You're going to keep know? hitting that chin to open up the gut. But you still have to be able to do so. Yeah. And I'm not saying you can't feel, you can't express, you can't be sensitive, but you got to be able to take it on the chin, learn from it, and be like, "All right, whew, yeah. that sucked." <laughs> or <laughs> let me move on. Yeah, and say, "Well, why do I keep taking this on the chin? Why always helps you get to a faster answer?" You say, "Well, 
why does this keep happening to me? Oh, because I keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Why did I make this decision versus that decision? Right. Or you have to be able to look back with retrospect. Yes. You have to look back and see, okay, here's the outcome. Now let me look back and see why I got that outcome. If you don't ever look back to move forward, people are saying, oh, the past is the past. Yes. But you still got to learn from that shit. <laughs> you know? Real talk. Being able to understand your past is what's going to help you for a better future. <clears throat> and so the idea is look back and say, okay, why did I, like Coach was saying, understand why you did something. You may not have known why you did it, at the, why you were doing it at the time, but when you got the bad outcome, you're like, oh, shit, this is what I did. And now I'm thinking back as to why I did it. I made a wrong decision. Mm -hmm. You know, let me next time, let's go a different direction because last time it didn't work so well for me. You know, how would you, so I would say if I want to sum up life's process from beginning to success, because success is never, I think success is never reached because it's like climbing a mountain that has no peak. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to always go higher. You're going to become successful. Yes. But your idea of what success is, once you've reached a level of certain level of success, a, a truly ambitious, successful person wants more success. Of course. So you're going to always strive for more. And so the idea is, as Coach said earlier, where are you? Know where you're at. Mm -hmm. Know where you came from. Know what your purpose and passion are. Who's in your circle? Mm -hmm. You know, and once you know who's in your circle, who's your partner that's going to push you forward? Mm -hmm. And the last thing is, can I learn from my failures? Right. That's the process. That's life's process. Yeah. And the last bit with all of those things, make sure along every step of the way, you're doing things for people other than yourself. Yes. Yes. The world is not run alone. You're not by yourself. So yeah. take care of humanity as you grow. And then once, once you get to that, rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Because the process is never ending. It's never ending. Yeah, I got, I got one thing that I'm going to say to y'all. It is your story, which is your glory. You don't like the story you're in? Rewrite it. <laughs> it's true. He's, he's, he's so right with that, you know? And I think, uh, dude, this is, this is a conversation that will tie in yeah. to many, many different conversations that we will have going forward. Yeah. Man, Coach, this was, this was from the live this morning through this this episode i think it kind of pulled in we had great cocktails they got a whole lot of sugar in the bottom of the glass i don't have anything in mind <laughs> i licked the glass coach man <laughs> where are they gonna find you they're man? gonna find me at coach k oh, where is it? coach coach kj it knows <laughs> Woo -hoo. that was a good cocktail oh yeah <laughs> you're gonna in. find him also at CoachKJ.com. Yeah. You're gonna find <laughs> you'll find him. You're gonna find me at Leonel Hunt. You're also gonna find me at Huntspine.com. And you'll find us both at podcast SOE dot com and at SOE underscore podcast. We out. We out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>